You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's The Voice After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's The Voice After Show. With over 27 million downloads each week, this is your home for all your post-show recaps, analysis, and interviews. This is AfterBuzz TV. I'm Christian Rosenberg with a very special edition of The Voice AfterBuzz. Joining me on the phone right now, a man who went from working at the Apple Store to being a rock star. And this guy rocked his way all the way to the semifinals, and we are delighted to have him on the phone with us. James Wolpert is on the phone. How are you, James? Hi, I'm not too bad. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Thanks so much. Uh, James, let me ask you. Last last night, obviously, crazy, crazy night for you. Unfortunately, you, you were sent home from The Voice. What, what kind of, like, whirlwind of emotions, really, do you think you've been going through between, you know, last night and this morning where you're now going around? I know you're on Access Hollywood this morning. I mean, what has been your mindset in this last literally less than 24 hours? Well, it has been a crazy whirlwind of emotions. I mean, I mean, the show is uh, particularly orchestrated to just be super stressful for everybody involved. <laughs> I mean, from Carson's super long pauses to the um, very precisely um, plotted eliminations, and um, it's um, it, was, it was definitely tough. It was it was it was very painful when it, when it happened in the moment, but mm. I think. Um, I was prepared for it based on the iTunes standings from the night before, and Adam is a fantastically supportive coach, and I know he's going to continue to be one after the competition's over. And um, not to mention that I'm surrounded by an incredible cast of people. I can't tell you, I can't stress enough how close we are. Um, it, 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 there is there is absolutely no sense of competition between us, and um, I don't I don't think you would ever know that this is a competition if you if you spent time around us spending time with each other well yeah because i, I want to talk to you you know with your team adam all three of you you know lasted so long in us so you guys really got a chance you know to bond together i mean do you really do you feel that that turned into really an advantage for all three of you as far as advancing because you guys just had that unity for so long yeah exactly i mean um, Adam's team is very close this season. We're very close with one another. Um, it Tess and Will are some of, the, some of my best friends right now. And, um, I, I think ultimately it was a great advantage for us. So uh, the reason being is that we're not just representing ourselves. We're representing our team. And I feel like I've succeeded in that way. Uh, is because my presence um, on the team up until now, even though I'm eliminated now, uh, has ensured that we're represented in the finale. Um, and it gives us a really good chance of um, getting Adam another win this season. Uh, after, after last night, we we heard you know when when Adam kind of embraced you, and we heard we heard him talking to you a little bit. Uh, when the cameras got cut off and went you know, like to commercial, or even after the whole broadcast, what 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 did he what did he say to you? Um, actually, and luckily, I didn't get a chance to speak with him. Um, they kind of whisked me away to do all kinds of um, press and digital stuff, and um, I didn't get a chance to see him. As soon as I do, though, I, I would love to talk to him. Uh, okay, cool. So no, no, like, calls or texts or anything since last night? Um, no, he's a very busy man. I understand <laughs> completely. I mean, yeah. I've been incredibly busy this morning, too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Hey, I want to ask you about... Your your mic stand that you used for a few weeks, or like the half of the mic stand, as, right. you know, kind of as, as as Blake called it, that to me almost kind of turned into your your signature. Who came up with that, and why didn't you continue using it in in further performances? Well, I, I have to say that it, it is not by any stretch of the imagination um, my idea. I, <laughs> I, I actually stole that from um, Freddie Mercury. Right. He's the one who originally 
um, donned the bottomless mic stand. Mm-hmm. And um, actually, I think Terry McDermott did it one time a few seasons ago. And uh, I, I liked having it around as an accoutrement to all of my bigger, more bombastic uh, huge power ballad numbers, but I, I I don't I didn't think it was appropriate to just let it keep hanging around. Okay, I got gotcha. you, uh, Adam. You know, throughout the season, one of the bi- one of the biggest compliments that that I remember him you know saying to you on the show was he talked about how you're a rock star growing before our very eyes. Do you do you feel today that you are truly a rock star because you are? Uh, I just want to make sure that you are aware of that. <laughs> oh, thank you, my friend. That, that really means a lot to me to say that. And um, I, I've definitely feel I definitely feel the growth that's happened through this competition, and um, I, I felt some of those seminal moments happen too. And uh, although I would be hard pressed to define myself as a rock star because I've known myself for the, <laughs> all of the twenty two years I've been alive. Um, it, I definitely want to have a career in, in doing this. And so I guess it depends um, what happens from here. But I'm, I'm going to work incredibly hard to make sure that I keep rocking. <laughs> well, I, I can't wait to, he- to hear um, you know the songs in the future, that's for sure. Do you have any, before you go on stage, do you have any type of like pre-show uh, rituals or like, any like type of superstitions that you always got to make sure you do something uh, before you go on stage? Um, not in particular. I know I have. <coughs> uh, it's this weird thing from my high school is that all the graduating seniors on their last show mm-hmm. would get these um, these little duck diaper pins, <laughs> um, and they would be um, considered lucky ducks, and it would be good luck for your last show. And um, I, my whole family like keeps them around and hands them out to people and pins them on various things. Um, it's really weird, but <laughs> it's really sentimental. No, that I think that I think that's really cool because it's you know it's something that's very personal to you and your family. So I I think that's awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, you're welcome. <laughs> does um, does any does any of the other um contestants kind of have some type of like superstition or pre or pre performance ritual that you kind of looked at and be like, oh, that guy's crazy. What is he doing this for? <laughs> uh, Will's a very superstitious dude. Oh, really? Uh, I uh, yeah. On, on elimination nights, he was actually very opposed to wearing jackets uh, because he felt like um, wearing a jacket was like preparing to leave. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> like go, go out in the cold. He, he half. He's half joking, but um, interesting. <laughs> yep, superstitions. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you. You there was a line that you said in like one of those like little confessional things before a performance earlier on in the season, where you talked about how you felt this whole thing was a dream and that you didn't want to wake up from it. Do you feel like you're? Um, do you feel like you're still dreaming, or yeah, do you feel like you um, woke up and this is your reality now? It, it's it still hasn't sunk in yet. I, I don't think it's. Well, and, and that's actually a lie. It, it's starting to sink in, but uh, it, it's so many huge, massive things have happened in the past few weeks that you you inevitably have to just let wash over you because they're just so they're way too big to digest at the time. Mm-hmm. That they, they just kind of pass. It's kind of just like, oh, I'm friends with Adam Levine now. Okay. I, <laughs> um, I, I really don't know how to react to that right now, so I'll just have to put a pin in it to later. But, sure. Um, and it's I've it's, it's exceeded all my expectations. This whole thing. Awesome. Um, hey, so did anybody ever? Uh, perform a song while you're on there and you're like, oh, that song would have been so perfect for me. Why didn't I do that one? <laughs> um, I I don't know. I have to think back through this stuff. Um, dang. I love Preston's rendition of Electric Seal. I think I thought that was really good. Oh, ah, okay. Audition. And um, I, I like that song. And it, that was really, oh, wow, that was a really good cover. Um what else? Um, I think. Hmm. 
I, I think actually this week I, I will did a fun song. I, I don't know if I would do that song in particular, but I would love to cover fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think I would, I would sing them pretty well. Cool. Uh, so we so we got our, our our finale next week, which we know we'll be seeing you on again. Um, you know, so you're not going anywhere. You're still going to be performing next week, no matter what, oh, which yeah. is great. I'll be around. You'll be around. So we got Tassan, we have Will, and we have Jackie. Who's winning? <laughs> um, I, I, this is, this is completely non-political. Sure. And I, I say this with a whole candor, is that I, I think the playing field is so obnoxiously even that it's hilarious. And um, all of these artists are equally phenomenal in their own really particular and sometimes incomparable ways mm-hmm. and uh and, but i think to my for my personal taste and i i stress this in every interview i get this question is that yeah. i trust it's my, only my personal opinion uh-huh. um i i think tess should take it okay and um I, I might be biased because i she's like an older sister to me but mm-hmm. um i i think she's a phenomenal talent and she would be she deserves to win has any um, has any record companies or anyone uh, reach out to you yet? Whether you're on show on the show or you know in these last twenty four hours, wanting to you know try to lock you in, like we want to build around you, we want to make your first album. <laughs> no, not just yet. Um, I intend to, to work very hard to attract that sort of attention, but <laughs> um, I, I don't know if it'll come unsolicited. Uh, no, I, I I think it's just a matter of time before you you get your album, dude. I, I don't I don't think I personally don't think you have anything to worry about because you had such like a unique style and and sound on this show that that to me I mean to me personally really you know helped you stand out. I know you know uh, you've talked with my colleagues Jason and Chloe on on the red carpet throughout the season, and mm-hmm. um, I, I can speak you know on behalf of I know for Jason you're his absolute favor from day one. So he, so um, Jason kind of called me last night, kind of, kind of upset at the fact that you got eliminated. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> he's a great guy. I, I love, I love him. And, um, I love every everybody who's been a part of this process. I, I don't think that I've I've encountered a single person that I, that I dislike. So. Well, well, I'm glad to know that you that you like me. So that that makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, told Jason I appreciate his fandom. Oh, absolutely! I, I will. I will gladly do that. Well, uh, James, I know you're you're an insanely busy man today, and you're going to start getting ready for the finale next week. Um, I want to make sure that everyone knows if they're not following you on Twitter yet, which is a shame on them if they're not. Uh, to follow you at James P. Wolpert, um, you seem to be you know pretty active on Twitter, which is always entertaining. And um, <laughs> you. you know, do you have you know anything else that besides obviously the finale next week that you wanted to plug? Um, nope, nothing beyond that. Just follow me on Twitter when you get the chance. That's where you're gonna. Um, that's my main avenue for communicating all the things that are happening in my life. All right. Well, well, James, we'll make sure that we all follow you on Twitter, and we'll make sure that you know you'll keep us posted with all the new things happening. And you know, can't wait. And you know, maybe next season we can try to get you in the studio here. You know, to, to chat with us some more. Uh, so, yeah, that'd be fantastic. Oh, awesome. So, James, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Again, you can follow James on Twitter at James P. Wolpert, and you can follow me on Twitter at C Rosie V O C. And for all of your After Buzz news, you can follow them on Twitter at After. Buzz TV. James, thank you so much. Best of luck on the finale and everything else going forward. I'm Christian Rosenberg and we will see you here next time. Yep, Thank you, my friend. Thank Bye. you. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.